After four years, Lego Mario finally did something other than just Lego Mario, but are these four sets worth $200? No, so I'm gonna do something about it. First, by making quick and expensive upgrades to each set, and at the end, I'll combine the whole wave into one massive display, all to answer, is Lego Donkey Kong worth it? Short answer? No. <laughs> Oh, don't, but don't stop w w watching. If you just want the Donkey Kong figure, I think getting the treehouse that he comes in is, it's its good enough. Good enough for some slack <laughs> loser whose mama raised a hair lip mental case that needs the whole Kong family tree. Minus most of the Kongs. Yeah, hi, that's uh, me. I'm the mental case. But no degradation of the brain is gonna change the affliction that curses all of the Mario people. That set was off. With the exception of a handful of sets, the builds are pretty bad. It's all made around this one gimmick of an electronic Hello, figure that can interact with scannable stickers. It's rather well done if you're the targeted demographic, i.e. seven years old. Without one of those additional figures, the sets look empty and are purposely made absurdly fragile. And those are the two things I want to fix. Fragility and Mario accessibility. These are the two builds from the first and smallest sets. A character, Rambi the Rhino, who has half his body cut off to fit Mario, and a rock tower that'll fall apart if you look at it funny. Product image angle, flat back, round ass Rambi already looks good. B tier. With the caveat, if you like the Mario design scheme, Chunky Big Blocky. The part where Mario stands has one of those scannable stickers that plays the drum beat from the song DK Island Swing. And when moving around, you can also hear stomps and rhino grunts? Explains the ass. Fixing him should be pretty straightforward, using some round curves and brackets to hold those in place. And if you end up modifying yours, please prioritize those big, beautiful, bull booty cheeks. The tower rocks are a very loose pile of unprinted toad heads meant for smashing is even easier to fix. Get rid of the mineable banana. Why and how bananas being mined from rock, I have zero explanation for. And add some pieces between the rocks, including a few jumper plates so it can still have that same play feature but won't fall over constantly. <laughs> Jungle Jam by many is seen as the worst of the theme, and I'm not sure how true that it... it oh, is, is that, that a list of reasons proving exactly what I said wrong? Oh. Oh. Um, there should have been another clip to store a guitar somewhere. Dixie should have had a ball joint in her ponytail to better replicate her moveset. Squawks from a glance looks fine, but under closer scrutiny, eh, the guitar amp blows. The arms have a certain awkwardness. The scannable tile plays the exact same song from the last set. The one play feature constantly gets stuck on everything. And this is $27. No, no, no. Let that set in. $27. <sighs> Okay, maybe the set has a handful of issues making it not that favorable, but after messing around with it, I found plenty of neat features. Like how it introduced a new tropical leaf mold that doesn't look like green Doritos. If you also scan the orange tile, you can hear squawks, yapping, that's me. Dixie Kong has a new printed tile for her earring, and there's an extra and you can use it on other characters. Honestly, the set is weak, and any quick fix would be so minimal you wouldn't even be able to notice it. Hopefully it'll have more of an impact on putting it with the rest of the sets. Diddy Kong's minecart ride is the most mixed of bags. On the one hand, it has some amazing character design in Funky Kong and Snaggles of the Shark, but on the other, it was the most disjointed and segmented set I have ever put together. I'll start with the positive, all the abundant references and the exceptionally well done play features. To Chibi Funky's flying by from Tropical Freeze. For starters, it just looks good. The tile features are superb, with the one in the cockpit triggering a takeoff, propeller, and landing sound effect. The flying sound is reused, but it still works within this context. With its smaller stature, not all of the in-game items are represented, but what's here works well. While some things like the partner barrels would have benefited from a print on them, they are still immediately recognizable. And when scanning the sticker on top, two things can happen. Either one of the balloons will be randomly selected giving Mario pre-existing power-up, or after scanning, you can pick a power-up by hovering Mario over one of the three colors. In the simplest way, it's a good Lego build. It's a great Mario build, and it's the perfect Donkey Kong build. And when paired with what's tied as the best brick-built DK figure, oh, this set, this set is just, Funky Kong is the most posable, and therefore most fun figure to play with. I mean, who else can convincingly be made into Gangsta Kong? The range of motion does come at a cost with a few visual setbacks. Funky isn't the only one that needs a little bit of refinement. Diddy has the same base design as Dixie, but more thought should have been given. The tile with the star print makes him look too chunky and would have looked much better as a flat print. Although I'm not sure if that's even possible with what pieces exist. A brown stud shooter for his peanut guns would have been the most perfect time to use a stud shooter in any set ever. And it not happening is a decision I will never understand. Understand. The new hat mold, like every other piece that was designed for this theme, is perfect, so the Nintendo logo not being printed on there is criminal. Mole Miner, he looks good. His inclusion in the cave is logical, and it's a super forgettable enemy with only one in-game appearance. I just think it's a weird pick when there are so many cave-based baddies to choose from. The same could be said about Snaggles, but he's set apart by not only looking great as a standalone character, but functioning great as a course gimmick. Plus, he's slightly more relevant than Mole Miner appearing in two games. Two games isn't.
a lot, but the franchise has always had generic animals as the enemies, and sharks are as generic as they come, and they've been coming for a long time. If the four figures don't convey why this set is hit or miss, there's even more to show that only further muddles the water. For another example, this awesome minecart is a brand new part specifically made just for the set because a brick built one would never survive the treacherous hands of a second grader when playing. But Donkey Kong can't fit. Both Mario and Diddy can ride at the same time, but unlike how scanning squawks unlocks a secret sound in Jungle Jam, scanning Diddy's sticker with the cart does Nothing extra! The sticker makes track sounds like the game, but the exact same song from the first two sets is still being used! Or how about the tracks themselves? They'll hit different people in different ways, with select sections being an exact copy of one another that can make for a repetitive build experience. Personally speaking, with how the set is segmented, there was enough buffer between each one to not drag down the overall build experience. However, the segmentation is my least favorite aspect about the Mario motif. That said, in a very unintentional way, where am I going? In an absolutely unintentional way, the set falling apart adds to the overall experience. This set genuinely surprised me in how in a small way, it accurately recreated that high-paced, stress-inducing, no time to think danger when riding the dilapidated rails. Absurd physics-defying jumps and turns that make me want more track, and honestly, the fragility of the set, the thing I hate the most about the Mario theme, works in its favor. Just like in the games, if you try to fight it, go too fast or the wrong way, it all falls apart. It is neat that that does add to it. That doesn't change the fact that this set is still a mess. I can't look at it and not see the sad excuse for a cave entrance. I can't pause wondering why the path to Funkies looks like garbage. I can't stop questioning how moles are mining for bananas and why when enormous valuable crystals are everywhere. Is there some hidden lore that I do not see? Do moles just really like potassium? And it's easier to go caving rather than taking it from the Kongs or mining in Rambi's stomping grounds? And if that's the case, why is the TNT plunger either too weak to blow up the rock or so strong that the whole Freaking cave is destroyed! For the $110 price tag, a lot could have been done differently. For starters, there should have been more characters, or at the very least, another mole miner or two to fill out the cave. I have, I don't know, like three pages of notes just on this set that, well, other than the fact that I'd be the only one that'd find it interesting, it would blow the video out by another, like, 20 minutes. But at the same time, really well done and has some great features. But also, it has an ugly layout, and a few changes here and there could have made a difference, but not anything significant. Same as the quick modifications that I would do to it wouldn't do that much, but it might help with the overall look, starting with Funky's arms. If Donkey Kongs can be hidden, then we can just replicate that build on him. I'd scrap this piece of ugly, then move the entrance to the beginning of the line, swap some mech joints around for plates so it's a tad more sturdy, and finally shuffle around some builds, and now I have a slightly better shell former. I saved the treehouse for last. Despite it not being the largest, it's by far the most interesting. If you find pointless irrelevant details interesting. Like this feature where DK can be launched out of his house. Under the trapdoor there's a crate that I assume to be a small representation of the famous Kong banana horde, but I'm not quite sure what that flower is supposed to represent. Or the figures. The designer killed it with Donkey Kong. Lego gorillas have come a long way. The basket wall forest looks natural. The tile not only makes the same Rambi sounds, but also plays the exact same song from every set. Cranky is the opposite of DK, where the figure looks bad with an overly square body, but the play feature is fun. Kiss Cranky three times and he'll pay you to stop. These features were made up for the set and don't reference anything from a pre-existing material, just like the crate and flower, I, I think. Or is it an Easter egg I'm too dumb to understand? Plenty of things were added just for play purposes, like knocking down and scanning this banana. Mario can eat it or share it. If he's not too careful, then it'll burn in lava or be soured in poison. Why the bananas weren't hidden in the hoard like they normally are is strange, so maybe the flower was a recreation from something from a game. Almost every build in the set can be traced back to something. Cranky Kong is from the original arcade cabinet. Donkey Kong 64 introduced the red rug and hammock made from vines and leaves, as well as the bongos, later receiving much more recognition with the Donkey Konga games and the Smash series. The boombox, tire inside and outside are from the original Donkey Kong Country. So what am I missing? I have no reason to think that this flower is anything other than just a really clever deep cut that I don't get and not just placed there for a little bit of inspirational play. Let's break this down scientifically. If I'm being very generous, there are over 30 direct callbacks between the four sets, with one thing connecting them all together. They appeared in the last two games, with the exception of four different builds. The bongos are the only thing that weren't made up that didn't appear in the last game, but that's pretty ubiquitous with Donkey Kong at this point. So that means that this flower, this piece of crap, this inconsequential thing is just a thoughtless inclusion with zero explanation. I'm so glad I spent so much of my life trying to figure that out.
Because this plastic crumb made me completely rethink the theme, instead of just building them and enjoying them like a, a normal person, I'm instead gonna rip up all the sets and combine them into one massive, objectively worse build. And because I don't want to spend another 20 hours on this, I'm only gonna use the parts in the sets and try to make it fit on this half size base plate. It shouldn't be completely terrible. Probably. It's gonna suck. My idea is to attach the treehouse over the cave entrance and add Jungle Jam as a lower platform. Let's see how it goes. That's not gonna happen. Um, not enough space, so I'm thinking I'm gonna go this way. Oh, not enough space, and uh, I don't have any parts. This was a very dumb idea. My initial thought was to use these big old rock pieces to build up the body of it because there are not a lot of bricks in this. It's mostly plates, so it's pretty difficult to work with. The longer I looked at it, I was like, the gap is ugly, and I tried to do something like that to fix it, but it would still have the gap on the outside. Then I realized, just turn it around. Now I have a way more solid base. Hopefully I'll have enough parts to extend this out just a tiny bit to do the same thing. Oh yeah, that's way more solid. That should be able to support the, the front half. And uh, now as for the back half, I'm not quite sure. I did a little off camera mining and I think I'm about done. So tomorrow, after I wake up and realize how bad this truly is, I'll walk you through it. But remember, this is a judgment free zone. No, it's not. I swear it looks better in person. The treehouse is the only thing that I tried to keep mostly intact. And while the cave entrance is drastically different, it still has a similar size footprint. And the minecart can still slide through with ease. Jumping on the tires, how the conclan gets up into the house. The tan is meant to represent straw for a more comfy floor. And when hanging out, there's a tie hook and a TV stand. So it's almost at eye level. One of the Rambi rocks is holding a bunch of leftover action tiles. I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to represent. Maybe records or magazines or games. You decide. The front of the house is stationed on the cliff side and the back on these stilts. I could have filled in this little gap to be more structurally real, but I thought it'd be more fun to simulate a Kong house party. Under the sleeping hammock down the cobbled together platforms is where most of the accessories went. And in this random junk bin, I even made sure to save that stupid little flower. Is the TNT in a safe spot? No. Could it destroy his home and all his worldly possessions? Yes. Is this absolutely a thing the dumb monkey would do? I think so. And finally, in case of emergencies, there's a secret banana stash where it should have always been. Is this better than the sets? I think the real question to ask is why haven't I washed this shirt after wearing it every day for the last two weeks?